Please pray with me. Gracious God, as we have come to your word, we pray that you will illumine our hearts, that by your Holy Spirit, you may touch us in the deep places of our souls through your word today. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the common theme of these two texts for today is the shepherd and the good shepherd. On John 10, Jesus is at the Festival of Lights in Jerusalem, and it's a very important festival in Jerusalem because it's a dedication, rededication of the temple uh, that remembers how God saved the people of Israel during the Maccabee Revolt. And uh, you might remember that a candle is lit each day to remember the light that comes into the world in God's saving grace. And Jesus, in this passage, in this same time in Jerusalem, says he is the light and he is the door. We just heard that, the gate by which the sheep come in. And now he says in this scripture that we have for today, he is the shepherd. <clears throat> and just before the passage for today, we hear that Jesus came to bring life and life abundant. And you may remember that this I am phrase is very similar to when Moses was at the burning bush and Moses said, God, what is your name? And God said, I am who I am. And Jesus is picking up on that same theme every time he says, I am the door, I am the shepherd, I am the light. I am representing God, I am the son of God. And so Jesus in this one is saying that he is the shepherd, the good shepherd. He says, those who hear my voice are the ones that God has called. Those who hear my voice will come in and be my sheep. Now John Calvin talked about this as predestination. Remember that phrase, and there are three ways of looking at it. Those who are pre-selected, that is, God names people and calls them by name. We heard that Isaiah passage, Fear not, for I have called you by name. You are mine. I know you. And then there's another kind of thought about predestination, that some are chosen for eternal life and some are chosen for eternal damnation, which is called double predestination. And then there's another way of thinking about predestination, and I think of that as coming from Ephesians, the first chapter, which talks about, I have known you, I have sent Jesus Christ from the foundation of the world to call you, that is to call all by name, not just some that were pre-selected for heaven, or uh, thinking of the double predestination, some going to heaven and some going to hell. And so we have been called, and God knows that at some point, God is going to reach out to the people of Israel. Well, when we think about the Old Testament and why we still look at it, it's because this is still the same message from the beginning of creation to the revelation of God in Jesus Christ, that God wants to bring us into relationship. God wants to be our shepherd, and so God invites us all the time, and then specifically in Jesus Christ, who as he says, has the power to lay down his life, that we might be brought into that relationship, lay down his life, that we might be forgiven for our sins that he bore on his body on the cross, our sins that we might be brought into relationship with him. And so he loves us and longs to be that good shepherd for us. Well, in this passage it says, I have other sheep that I know about, and they will come into my fold, they will come 
into my flock. And at one point in time, there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is an interesting passage and a lot of questions you might have about it. One theologian, Gabriel Facker, says this, that all the world religions seek to lead people to a moral and ethical life so they will build a better world. They will build, as we say in the phrases of the Christian church, the kingdom of God. And as Facker says, if all these religions are doing these ethical and moral standards or living by them, at one point when they reach heaven, they will meet Jesus. And Jesus will say, now do you recognize me? And if they say yes, then he welcomes them in. But he believes, Gabriel Facker does, that people will be overwhelmed by Jesus because they will know him and recognize him. Well, if that's the case, and I don't know if it is, then we don't have to worry about the other religions. We can celebrate them and respect the other faiths of the world and try to be in dialogue and respect with the people of the world. Well, what's going on in our text for today? I believe God is saying that God wants to be our shepherd. Do you notice that in Psalm 23, the mood changes, or, or the voice, it, it changes from third person talking about God to the second person addressing God as you, thou art with me. It recognizes that God, our shepherd, is in relationship with us, that we can address God and talk to God. We can talk about God, but we can also pray and talk to God and this God is revealed as one who wants to feed us in green pastures. God wants to restore our soul and comfort us. God wants to lead us in paths of righteousness so we will build this kingdom that God calls us to have. God will lead us through dark valleys which seek to overcome us, even death. God will be there with us in these dark valleys. God prepares a table for us, even amidst our enemies. God is with us and feeds us. And God invites us to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, knowing that if we are with God in this life, we will be with God in the world to come. And so this God who reveals himself to us in Jesus Christ, and who revealed himself to David, the writer of the psalm, longs to be our shepherd and give us that life that we might have that life and have it abundantly. And Jesus said again, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will ever snatch them out of my hand. This good shepherd will hold us close to us and hold us in the palm of his hand. Now that idea of being a shepherd was in the Old Testament as well. There's a quote from Ezekiel on the front of the bulletin which says, I will give them shepherds after my own heart. There were evil shepherds. Some of the kings and queens of Israel were not following God and not living the life of faith and worshiping only the true God. And God promises that God will give them shepherds. There's another thing to think about shepherds. That's where we get the word for pastor, the pastor of the people. God wants the people to have shepherds after his own heart, those who will guide people in the way of faith and love them and lead them. Listen to what the Book of Order says about pastors. They shall preach and teach the faith of the church so that the people are shaped by the pattern of the gospel and strengthened for witness and service. When they serve at font and table, they shall interpret the mysteries of grace and lift the people's vision toward the hope of God's new creation. When they serve as pastors, they shall support the people 
in the disciplines of the faith amid the struggles of daily life. So God longs to give pastors who are shepherds to the people of God. And we remember as Presbyterians that pastors aren't alone. Pastors work with a session, that the pastor and session are the shepherds of the people and lead people to understand the mysteries of God, to know God more closely and more deeply as the people of God come to know God through Jesus Christ. That God longs to have shepherds in a congregation that guide people in their faith. And in this interim time, I know you're going to find the next shepherd, one who will follow the shepherds that have gone before and will guide this congregation to be people of faith and who will serve Jesus Christ to lift the kingdom of God in this world. Well, how do we hear the shepherd and know the voice of the shepherd who calls us? In my own life, I have found that daily scripture reading really helps me to find the word for my life. I follow the common lectionary, and I'll tell you where you can find it. If you go to the Presbytery of Detroit, it's DetroitPresbytery.org. You'll find the website of the Presbytery, and right there is the lectionary. And in the lectionary, you'll find a psalm for the morning and evening. You'll find an Old Testament passage. You'll find a letter. You'll find a gospel reading for the day. And these psalms and scriptural readings bring us into contact with the shepherd, that we might hear the shepherd's voice. In my own life, I do this every day. I start my day with a time of reading the scriptures. And as I follow them and read them, Every day there's something that calls my name and I, I hear the voice of the shepherd speak to me through the revelation of the scriptures and the Holy Spirit guiding me as I pray. And that gives me a sense that God has called my name. No matter what I'm facing in my day that's going to come, I know that God will be with me. And it helps me to take time to sort out my priorities and pray for concerns, even in my work, to say, God, show me what, what should I be doing today? And with these people and those people, what should I do and be? Because the Lord is our shepherd. He calls our name. And as we come in contact through prayer, through weekly worship as the people of God, through hymns, through prayers, through scripture reading, we hear the voice of the shepherd who calls our name. And as we hear that voice, we know that there is no fear. We have no anxiety as we face the day that is ahead of us. You know, last week was the Boston Marathon, and uh, the people that run that now must have a different attitude about how it's going to be when they finish that race, worried about whether there's going to be someone who interferes with their race through terrorist activity or bombing. And I remember when that uh, explosion took place, I was driving down to a celebration at Wayne State University. My wife was meeting with a student who had just finished his doctoral dissertation defense and was, you know, already, and I heard this. And over dinner, we're watching the explosions again and again and again, and I'm thinking, where's my daughter who lives in Boston? She often goes to the marathon to cheer people, and she's run some herself. So I called her up and said, are you going to be afraid now to run marathons in the future? Are you going to be afraid to go to these big events where people are? And she said, my friends and I have already talked about the next race we're going to run. We are not going to let someone stop us because of their evil activities. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, 
for thou art with me. Friends, we have a great shepherd, God. A great God who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ, who longs to be our shepherd, who longs to guide us every day so that we might know of his love for us, so that we might know that we need not fear and have any anxiety, so that we know that we have a life waiting for us in heaven with Jesus Christ and all the saints. What a good shepherd we have. Thanks be to God.